Hello and welcome to this new episode of Free Science 365. Today's challenge is measure the speed of light. Now, as usual, let's look at the things we need to attempt this challenge. So all we need is a bar of chocolate and a ruler. But one more thing, and that is these things are standing actually on top of a microwave oven and this microwave is your average household microwave here and that's the challenge now let me give you a little bit of introduction to what we mean by speed of light now, if you are from science background or engineering or technology, you probably have a better understanding of what we mean by speed of light. For those of you who don't have a very good grasp on what speed of light means, probably this tutorial will help you a bit. So, let's start with the most iconic equation in physics, and that is E equals mc squared. And C here is actually the speed of light. Now, E is energy, M is the mass of particle, and C is the speed of light. And that's exactly what we are attempting to measure here using a microwave oven and a bar of chocolate. Now, how do we measure the speed of light? So first, let's look at the basics of what is speed. Now, the speed of a particle. What is a particle? Particle is anything that we can see which is not a wave. For example, this marker is a particle. It's not a wave. Yeah? So the speed of a particle is very easy to measure. It's basically distance over time. And distance can be measured in let's say meter or kilometer or whatever so let's say meters and time can be seconds or minutes but for the ease of understanding let's take the basic uh, unit of time which is second so meter per second or kilometer per hour as long as it's a unit of distance and time you can measure the speed of a particle for example if uh, your car goes on the highway at 80 miles an hour now that's the speed of your car 80 miles in one hour 80 miles is the distance time is one hour that's the speed but the speed of a wave is a little bit different it's measured in a different way now light is both a wave and a particle and that's what we call the dual nature of light but today we are not discussing dual nature of light for that we'll have another video today we are interested in measuring the speed of light and light as many of us can imagine is also a wave light is a wave how do you measure the speed of a wave well the method of measuring the speed of a wave such as light is actually very similar to the measurement of a particle now a wave this is a wave right now a wave has the length of a wave so the wave starts from here it goes to this point and then it goes to the opposite point here these are very high energy points here and comes back to zero energy point now here all the way down all the way up back to the base this is the length of one wave and we call it wavelength in physics we indicate using the character lambda so 
The speed of a wave can be measured using wavelength, which is actually distance. So let's replace distance by wavelength. Because the unit is the same. And then we also have to measure the frequency of the wave. What's the frequency of a wave? The frequency in simple terms is how many times does this wavelength complete a cycle in one second? That's the easiest explanation of the frequency. So wavelength times frequency. Now this is a little bit confusing. So let me present in a different way. For example, your favorite FM radio channel always advertise their frequency. For example, Bay FM 98.3. Now 98.3 is actually the frequency of the Bay FM. And that means the wave of the FM station goes up and down 98.3 million times in one second. Uh, that's a mind-boggling number but that's the speed at which micro particles work. So, so frequency is how many times do you repeat the cycle per second? So wavelength is again meter or centimeter or whatever, micrometers, and frequency is per second. So even though distance over time and wavelength times frequency they look different, but at the heart of it, they're actually measuring the same thing. They're measuring the speed of something in meters per second. The basic premises remain the same. It's the speed of something is always meters per second. Now, in physics, we can therefore say wavelength is lambda, okay? Speed of light is C equals lambda which is the wavelength times frequency now frequency can be indicated with the term mu and so this is the formula that we're going to use to measure the speed of light using our microwave oven and the chocolate bar that we have and lambda is the wavelength we will have to measure the wavelength of the microwaves in the microwave oven and frequency luckily we don't need to measure it because it's always given at the back of the oven so in most cases just look at the frequency ratings of your microwave oven and you'll find it's something like 2450 mhz which means megahertz uh, we'll come to that later so you don't need to measure this only if you can measure the wavelength of the waves uh, emanating in the microwave oven you can actually measure the speed of light and that was the primer i hope this helps you uh, find a way to measure the speed of light now over to the challenge okay thank you for brainstorming over how to find the speed of light and now let me show you how to do it yes so without further ado let's get started okay so first of all keep the wattage at maximum so on my microwave oven the maximum is 700 watts and that's where I'm keeping it and now Let's open the microwave oven and take the glass plate out because we don't want it to rotate. So you have to take the rotating mechanism out. It's easy to come out. If it doesn't come out easily, please ask someone who can help. Don't break it. These things are sometimes uh, difficult to procure. So we took the rotating apparatus out okay we don't need it we want a standing wave we don't want the chocolate to rotate and now let's open the chocolate bar 
The good thing is, after you are done with the experiment, you can even eat it. Oh, we have the chocolate, but it's broken in three parts here. I have tried to put them together, and let's see if it still works. If not, I will have to buy another bar of chocolate. Anyway, and this then goes in. Now remember, there's no uh, rotating thing inside. And now we close it. All right. And now let's set it for about 30, 40 seconds. Now you need to observe the chocolate. As soon as it starts melting, we have to switch it off. We don't want the chocolate to melt more than we need to. I think it's showing the signs of melting. All right, let's stop there. Okay, I don't know, maybe around 15, 20 seconds is all it took. I hope there's no explosion. <laughs> Okay, let's take it out and yes, very good, not bad actually, let's adjust the angle of the camera, so this is what we got. So as you can see, the chocolate is melting at certain points, but nothing is happening at other points, okay, so that's what we wanted. Now, all you need to do, oh, keep a tissue paper handy. Anyway, so, uh, yes, let's take the ruler. And let's look at the distance or which the chocolate is actually melting. So if you take a point here, so this is the nearest point of melting. And if you take it, is it visible? It comes to be around Let's take the camera near. So it comes to here around six centimeters. So we got our measurement now. Okay, so now we know that the speed of light can be measured using lambda, which is the length wavelength, and the frequency of the wave. Okay. Let's focus on that part now. So, yes, we know C equals lambda times mu. Lambda is the wavelength. Now we have here six centimeter. That's what we found out. So this is our wave here, and but it's not a normal distribution. This should be the same height actually, and the lower. But you get the idea. Now, what we have here is we have a six centimeter gap between this point and this point, and these are very high energy points. These are called anti nodes. So this is an anti node, and this here is also an anti-node. Now what does an anti-node do? It has a very high energy and so it melts the chocolate in those places. So here between this point and this point the distance is six centimeters is what we calculated. If you want to find the wavelength which is the full wave's length you have to multiply this into two because six centimeters is the length of a half wave because during this half wave you have two high energy points so this is the point where the chocolate melts and this is also the point where the next melting spot comes so if you want to measure the wavelength all you do is you multiply this times two so and that is 6 times 2 is 12 centimeter. So our wavelength here is 12 centimeters. 
And that was the only missing point of the puzzle. Because the frequency of the microwave oven is, as I told you, two. Oh, let me look at it one more time. Yes, it's two, four, five, zero megahertz. So just by doing this simple multiplication, we can actually find the speed of light. So simple. Now let's see how to do that. Okay, so 12 centimeter and if you want to convert into meters, what would you do? If you divide it by 100, you will have meter. Okay, so that is the wavelength times 2450 times mega. Mega is 10 to the power 6 million cycles per second. So you have meters and you have per second which is the speed and that will be meters per second and all we need to do now is calculate these numbers so if you take these two zeros out you have 10 to the power 4 remaining here I mean you can use a calculator I'm just using it manually and so you have 12 times 2450 12 0 is 0 12 times 5 is 60, so 0, carry 6, 12 times 4 is 48, plus 6, what is 48 plus 6, 54, is 4, and carry 5, 12, 2 to 24, plus the 5, 29, 2, 9, 4, 0, 0, times 10 to the power 4 meter per second, and that actually comes out to be 29400 zero, zero, and then four zeros one two three four 294 million meter per second I don't know if it's captured is it captured in the yes is it yes so that's our calculation 294 million meter per second so that's the speed we measured using our household microwave oven and a bar of chocolate. Now let's see what the actual speed of light is. Now scientists use very sophisticated methods to measure the exact speed of light. And what scientists have measured is 299792 8 meter per second uh, da, 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 da. yes 299 million 792 thousand 458 meters per second the speed that we measured is 294 million meter per second not too bad look at that isn't that amazing? It is indeed very amazing. Now, the difference is because you have air, you have all these disturbances to the microwaves here, and also uh, the ruler we used is not very sophisticated, but I'm sure if we had, uh, you know, a vacuum with us and something that could measure the distance in even more uh, precise manner, we would come even near to that so that's to me that is super super amazing the speed of light using a household microwave oven and an innocent bar of chocolate which of course I'm gonna eat after finishing shooting now interestingly there's another uh, relationship between the microwave oven and a piece of chocolate a bar of chocolate and the story is very interesting so years ago when I was I think about 12 or 13 years old I read it in uh, Reader's Digest of all things how microwave oven came into being now during the Second World War uh, Americans uh, were fighting the war in Europe and a soldier was sitting at the radar system 
and the radar uses frequencies to see if some enemy planes are coming in our territory and then you warn your people troops on the ground what's happening anyway so this guy he was looking at that round thing eating chocolate and after some time he observed that the chocolate melted and that was a surprising thing for him because uh, it it was a very strange phenomenon and he was surprised so he tried putting more chocolates in that area and he was surprised to know that the chocolate was melting well it's because uh, we use microwaves and microwaves have a lot of energy uh, so if you keep the chocolate at certain uh, places it will melt and this thing gave this uh, military person the idea and he's like wow so can we use that energy to cook food and heat things and so this guy then after the war was over he goes back to the United States uh, does more research on that and brings out the first microwave oven which could be used to cook food and mind you the microwave ovens that I'm talking about here after the Second World War were as big as your refrigerator today actually I saw a microwave that was used in bullet trains back in the day uh, and the microwave looked massive actually uh, I mistook it as an old refrigerator so that was the size of microwaves back then but you know as the technology advanced we got the microwave smaller and smaller in size and we have the microwaves of today uh, comparably very small in size anyway so that was a small tidbit about uh, this yet another relationship between <laughs> chocolate and microwave if there were no chocolate with that military person uh, that day probably we wouldn't have the microwave oven in our kitchens so that was today's challenge we measured the speed of light using a chocolate bar and microwave oven Thank you for watching and as always, please like it, subscribe, comment on it, spread it as much as possible and I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.